And let me introduce to you um, Dr. Sutter. He is um, Dr. Sutter is um, uh, MD, MBA, sports medicine physician, board certified in physiatry. And um, I'm sorry, I'm, I have got things blocking my screen, so I apologize for the fumbling here. Uh, so Dr. Fre Frederick Sutter is an MD, MBA, sports medicine physician and board certified specialist in physical medicine and rehab. He is uh, popular in speaking uh, on many different topics. Uh, we like to have him speak on the use of our products. Uh, Dr. Sutter did his uh, graduate work, in, or his, his graduate work under, I'm sorry, his graduate work at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. And he did his uh, residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation at the University of the Hospital of Pennsylvania, also in Pennsylvania. He holds a Master's of Business Administration, Health Sciences concentration on Johns Hopkins University. Now, um, we have a few slides for you to, um, to see, and I will change to Dr. Sutter. And um, unfortunately, Dr. Sutter is coming in as Christian today because that's how we set this up. So, um, so um, you will be getting Dr. Be getting. Getting. Thank you, Dr. Sutter. Thanks, John, and thanks to Andy Minutoria for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to pull out my slide here, and I would just like to share a little bit about how I got into this. I've been using these products for about 17 years now. The Heal rep came to me one day at lunch, handed me a box of troll meal, and she says, if you have a, an opportunity where everything is still, you try this. Well, the box sat for about three months, and a patient of mine came to me who I hadn't seen for about a year. She had a failed bypass surgery with infected cortex graft. Um, she had had MRSA as a complication. She spent a year in a nursing home, and they wouldn't inject her with any steroids. Uh, I said, well, I know something pretty sure is not going to hurt you. Why don't we try that, uh, which is what we did. This was in 2000. Uh, I treated her knee several times, and uh, I didn't get intra-articular. I stayed periarticular because I was you know, very cautious with this. And uh, then we went to about six or eight visits, uh, and then a few follow visits over the next year, and she didn't get her knee replaced until about 2007. Uh, that's how it went with that. So my big question when we started was, what, did I, what do I need to know about using these non-steroid medications? Uh, first, that they have to be safe. Uh, the safety and efficacy has been shown. There's been a good randomized placebo-controlled study uh, that was done, uh, published about two or three years ago, and presented at the ULAR meeting as well as the American College of Rheumatology, uh, showed a non-inferiority study with uh, steroids. Is it predictable? Uh, yes, uh, if you understand what you're looking for. Uh, is it a treatment option for people who can't tolerate, refuse, or have exhausted failed steroid-based treatments? Well, I think so. Uh, and in many cases, in individuals who have failed steroid therapy, and as long as I give them at least a month or six weeks after injection, I'll go ahead and use one of the, the uh, HEAL products. Uh, certainly safe for use in diabetics, because you don't have to worry about uh, any bump in blood sugar. And it will not compete in any way with medications that the, the patient's currently taking. So you don't have that detoxification concern. Uh, all you have to do is see some diabetic spiral out of control uh, or someone get other effect or worst case scenarios of a joint infection or a post injection inflammation, uh, and you don't want to use that uh, that steroid injection too frequently or too soon. And you can also use a much smaller needle to decrease the post injection soreness. Um, so there's no known theoretical risk for drug interactions, which is wonderful, and it is cost effective. In my practice, I see uh, uh, between 75 and 100 patients a week. I'll use at least the same number of vials of any one of the HEAL products, which I've been using for that many years, and I'm quite pleased with the results. Um, the most important thing is you don't have to learn anything new. This is an indication-based treatment. It follows conventional diagnosis and symptoms. It has an extraordinarily high safety profile, uh, which actually I'll address that now. Um, the one thing you're going to get sometimes is some post-injection soreness. And that's all based on immediate pain relief that people are anticipating from a, uh, a product. And you have to tell them that occasionally with these products, I might make you worse for a day or two, and then within 24 hours, that will rapidly 
respond and, and you'll be you'll be either the same or you'll be a lot better. That said, uh, sometimes if you do have some post-injection soreness that you can't really uh, justify, it's probably where you put the needle. My experience is a small hematoma or bruise, um, maybe they didn't tolerate it so well. And this is a very logical and convenient uh, product for, uh, for office use. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll start with the back at this point. And um, I think what I want to do is start with the back. And my, the way I, obviously everything's uh, functional and there's a clinical diagnosis. So most of the time, I'm going to evaluate someone in a standing position. We'll get the full history and physical exam. And most um, my, my biggest concern is what's the functional diagnosis? What's the problem? Um, am, I, am I blocking that? Um, I want to see what I'm treating first. So you get your hands on the patient, you look for trigger points, you look for tender attachments to uh, the, the iliac crest, the spinous processes. Do they have a scoliotic shift? Are they limping? Uh, do they have hip issues? Um, do they have... Uh, 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 any neurologic abnormalities. Of course, most people come to me, since I'm a resort doctor, um, the doctor of last resort, uh, they come to me with a full set of films. So I stand on the, the shoulders of the people who have treated them before me, and I go ahead and, and do an evaluation, look at all the films, get a functional and a clinical diagnosis, and I make some recommendations. Now, if these people have lots of tender points over uh, ligaments uh, and theses where the muscles attach along the iliac crest. The paraspinal muscles have tossed bands or um, significant tenderness. Uh, then I know I'm probably going to be able to help them. If they have lots of trigger points in the gluteus medius minimus uh, and other areas around the iliac crest, I know I'm going to be able to help them as well. They have restricted muscle range of motion. If I lie them on their back, and they, we do a flex leg raising test, test where we push their leg towards their body and sometimes laterally rotate it a little bit to stretch the gluteal muscles, and I'll know that they have active trigger points there. At that phase, I'll inform the patient and say, you know, what have you done so far? What has worked? Of course, you'll do the standard treatment. Uh, you do physical therapy. They're not fit. They have weak core muscles. They have bad biomechanics. They have very tight hamstrings or hip flexors that puts their spine in poor position to begin with, and we'll do some physical therapy first, and we'll not jump right into injection therapy, but if they've had pain for months, they fail multiple other treatments, then I feel free to move ahead with treating them. The, the things that I do, the things that I look for uh, would be the supraspinous ligaments in the lumbar area, the paravertebral muscles, which I really didn't treat uh, much in my uh, earlier years of practice. Um, I've been out of school since 1981. And, but now that I'm doing more in the way of, of you know, injectables in the paraspinals, I'm, I feel like I'm getting better results as long as I know what I'm looking for on, with my palpatory skills. If their muscles are soft and very pliable in the paraspinals, which is usually not the case, um, I'll leave them alone. But if they are hard, they have a taut band. Uh, the Germans call that muscle harten, which is it's a very taut, hard band. It's not necessarily painful but it's definitely hard. You can feel that. That's not normal muscle. I'll look along the iliac crest where the cuneal nerve, there's superior cuneal nerve right by the PSIS, the uh, posterior superior iliac spine. Um, I'll look down at the medial cuneal nerve as they, that conglomerate exits the uh, neural foramen of the sacrum. The inferior cuneal nerve that comes up from the posterior femoral nerve, we'll look for those origins as potential pain generators. And then, of course, the trigger points throughout the gluteal musculature, according to Travell and Simons. Uh, you also look over the retrochocanteric bursa, uh, the iliotibial band tendon, uh, the tensofasciolata, which, of course, is a major pain generator in the lateral hip, which will refer down the lateral thigh. And also look for the iliohypogastric nerve as it comes over the iliac crest through the um, transversalis fascia, loops over the, the if I had a model I could show you, but it looks over the iliac crest and then runs all the way down over the greater trochanter and then down to the distal thigh. All these injections are very simple. My first time diagnostically, I almost always use a uh, weak strength lidocaine. Um, 
for those of you who are using Marcaine, if you're using it in muscles, it does have some toxicity to the muscle. And repetitious injection of that is not recommended. I use half percent lidocaine, frequently uh, preservative-free. Uh, we seem to be having a hard time getting uh, lidocaine lately. So sometimes I go back and forth between the preserved and the preservative-free. Well, I'll uh, put a vial in there. I'll use a 6 to a 12 cc syringe. And I'll use anywhere from a 30 gauge half inch needle all the way up to a 3 inch 25 gauge needle to get to the deeper muscles. Frequently, after the injections, I'll make sure I haven't missed anything and I'll do a functional evaluation with all sorts of bending, flex leg raising, and I'll see if there's anything left. The patients are actually remarkably accurate at asking and telling me exactly where they hurt, and I may have missed something, either with a muscle or some uh, emphysis, which is where a muscle or a ligament attaches. Um, and frequently, even while standing after the injections, most of the time I'll have them lie down. Uh, I'm not interested in picking anybody up off the floor anymore. I've been there, done that. So we have patients lying down most of the time. In the spine also, there's other uh, dominating factors such as a, a thoracic kyphosis. If you have someone with either had, that has either had compression fractures or um, severe progressive kyphosis with poor posture over decades, that will shift center of gravity forward creating significant strain on the lumbar spine um, and cause a chronic recurrent problem. Um, again, after the injections, we reassess the patient. How are they looking? How do they feel? Because one way you'll get a repeat customer is if they feel better immediately after. Now, post-injection instructions, always. Nobody goes in the hot tub or the pool after multiple injections particularly after joint injections. Um, nobody uh, actually does exercise. I recommend the day of and the day after. You can exercise all you want, go to PT, see any other you know, activity level prior to that. But after that, you basically want them to rest and do simple things around the house. Post-injection soreness can be treated very readily with uh, some topicals. I use Tromiel cream quite a bit. Gets the people to massage it out. It helps a little self-awareness and helps with the post-injection pain, as well as ice. I like ice better than heat because people tend to cook themselves with the heat. And you know if you use heat any longer than 15 minutes or 20 minutes, they start to get a little edema. Um, once they have uh, this under their belt, I bring them back anywhere from two to three weeks, depending on how bad they are. If they're really bad, uh, I'll bring them back in a week or 10 days. I find that seems to be the optimal window for my experience. Um, we also look at what are the other pain generators around the spine. Well, we've mentioned many of them, but just to do a quick review, the interspinous ligaments over the supraspinous, lig uh, supraspinous um, um, dorsal spines are a very easy and quick way to find some local pain generators. The patient has to be prone with a pillow under the waist to open those spinous processes up so you can actually get to them. Otherwise, if they're extended, or they have a significant lordosis, you'll oppose those uh, dorsal spines and you won't be able to really palpate the ligament much at all. The paravertebral musculature is certainly another one. Uh, the erector spiny fascia along the lateral border tends to be very tender as well. The cluneal nerves, as I mentioned, the superior cluneal nerve dives into an osseofibrous tunnel uh, medially and superiorly just below the PSIS depending on this, and you can frequently find a very severe pain generator there. If you're not familiar with any of these anatomic landmarks, just start with the trigger points in the glutes. Um, they're easy to find. The patient will tell you when it hurts, and you'll feel a rather tense band, probably a little jump sign, um, maybe a little muscle twitch when you press on it, or if you release it, sometimes it'll fasciculate a couple times. And look, gluteus minimus, everybody likes to talk about the piriformis, but gluteus minimus, in my experience, is probably the worst uh, and the most significant pain generator, pound for pound, in the glutes. Um, anteriorly, there can be some pain generators, but I like to stay out of that uh, femoral triangle anteriorly just because of the femoral nerve, although there are some good uh, approaches to using um, some other injection techniques, such as perineural injection therapy, which we've been doing more and more lately for neuropathic pain.
Range of motion of the hip certainly makes a big difference. If you do Patrick's test before your injections and then afterwards, you'll notice that if you have a very large trigger point release with multiple muscle twitches at the end of your needle, uh, you'll notice that that lateral rotation drops out uh, 10, 15 degrees and the patient will notice it right away. And actually that's one of your tells on your exam that if they are very much more restricted on one side or the painful side compared to the opposite, then you, you're pretty sure that you have a trigger point in the uh, TFL at the very least. Um, checking the hip flexors in the prone position with the pelvis stabilized and, and flexing the knee, you'll find out how tight the quads and hip flexors are. That will generate a lot more lordosis and account for some chronic pain, usually in the posterior elements like the, uh, the facet joints. Uh, the quadratus lumborum is an unsung hero. Uh, it's been described very well in Travell's text, Travell and Simon's text. It starts in the 11th and 12th ribs um, medially and extends down along the medial iliac crest. The way to access that is a sideline with the, the lower uh, limb flexed, the upper limb extended fully, and the trunk slightly forward rotated. And then you go down right above the iliac crest and find where that muscle is. Now, in, in petite people, uh, patients, it's easy to find. and more robust or stout patients, it's pretty difficult to find. And the landmark you would lose, use is getting right on that iliac crest and pressing down. And they will be exquisitely painful there. And that is an injection not for the faint-hearted. Uh, frequently, I use a three-inch needle with that stay parallel to the, uh, the dorsal aspects of this spine parallel to that so you don't have a misadventure getting into the retroperitoneum or in the kidney. It's better to stay low on the iliac crest and usually you'll stay out of trouble with the lungs. And there has been some reported um, uh, pneumothoraces with injections attempted in that area. Um, I think that that about wraps up my ideas for that.